All right, Bioware is not messing around. Been waiting 600 years for this. Okay, Sisani here. I did a Twitter poll and 82% of a small sample size said you wanted an analysis video. So boom, here it is. Let's do this thing. That's, that's pretty dense. Damn it, I'm not actually a synthetic despite what my avatar suggests about me. This is going to be some hard work. It's only a minute 20 seconds, but it's a really great trailer. In fact, most people have said that this is their favorite so far. Let's dig in without any further preamble and get into what people care about the most. Look at these wrinkles. <clears throat> Sorry. Ever since the N7 Day trailer and this flash of the Asari Doctor and the Andromeda Initiative shirt, I've been really excited about the casual clothing, especially since it doesn't seem to be military clothing. It's maybe a touch more white than I'd go for, but that's okay. Okay, on to the show. While not named in the trailer, we finally have our first look at Liam Costa and Cora Harper. They are given introductions in the Andromeda Initiative Pathfinder Team Briefing video, which I still need to analyze. You're killing me, Bioware. Killing me. But no, actually, I love this. We've known for a couple of months now that Liam was a cop on Earth and is a bit of an idealist with great hair. Can confirm, 11 out of 10, great hair would hair again. He's also the one that said the line about waiting 600 years for this, and the Game Informer magazine has said he wears his heart on his sleeve and always has writers back. I'm sensing that he and the writer twins were friends before the Andromeda Initiative, but that isn't confirmed. I am a little disappointed that the cute goggle things from the gameplay trailer character icon aren't there. Just, just a teeny bit disappointed. Just a bit. Another great hairstyle. Like seriously, the hair looks great so far, so high hopes for those character creators. Comes with Korra. She's the Pathfinder second in command and a biotic that trained with Asari Commandos. More about that in the briefing video. More of our squad as we know. There is PB and the Turian Vetra, who we finally get to hear from. Please, you're not really going out there on your own. Also, Drac the Krogan, who is... <laughs> I don't need an army. I've got a Krogan. Go right in and have fun. Exactly how you would expect a Krogan to be. So that's a squad count of five. The Reddit leak said seven, but we also have heard from the developers that a squad mate was cut for room and time. If that happened after the leak came out, then we may only have six squad mates. Enter this guy. Meow. Keen-eyed viewers might notice this race is those tentacle-headed guys I guessed were the Angaran. Mike Gamble has confirmed on Twitter that they are the Angaran, and this cute Angari lion kitty guy is Jaw. These pop dolls were revealed with Monocle Man present along with the name on his box, so 99.9% .9 chance this is Jaw, and some slightly lower percentage that he's a squad mate. I'm okay with this. I also want to point out Liam's lovely little double Omniblade action. There seems to be a lot of variety among the Angaran, not limited to the color of their skin, but in the shapes of their faces and head tentacle things. Until somebody tells me otherwise, I'm imagining octopus type skin, okay? Bite me. Anyways, I know the developers were wanting to have more structural diversity for alien creatures like humans do. You know, like width the face, height to face, cheekbones, eye shape, instead of just changing the face paint the Turian had like in the original trilogy. Moving along, the face of this hoop head guy is revealed. 
I'm still pretty sure he's a cat since it looks like he's made out of coral. And the fact that cat are more organic looking is a key feature. His name is the Archon, a name we saw in the gameplay trailer on the galaxy map as a quest. M4 hunting the Archon. The most important character face reveal, however, again, most important is this adorable guy right here. Voiced by Garrett Ross, this is our Solarian pilot, Kalo Jath. Just look at that cute little face. Look at it. Look at it. Which brings me to the actual question everybody is asking. Yeah, can I bang it? If the answer isn't yes for Kalo, pre-order canceled. No, but in all honesty, according to Aaron Flynn, they don't want to do an announcement like with Dragon Age Inquisition, where they outline all of the romance options and which gender you need to be for it. While frustrating, I am happy with this response because it helps with role-playing. To paraphrase Frida Wolf from Twitter, romance in Andromeda is like ringing the doorbell. Keep pushing the button until sex comes out or find out nobody's home. As an asexual, I realize I'm not an expert on this, but this metaphor seems a little flawed. Wouldn't a better option be to text for a booty call? Why walk all the way up to the door and ring the bell? What if they're sitting down to dinner and are busy? What if it's cold? I'm not walking up to that doorbell if it's cold unless I know for sure they're home. And then I better get some hot cocoa. In fact, that sounds better. One second, I'm going to make hot cocoa. Much better. Where were we? Right. Who's bangable? Well, we know this for sure. That's steamy for sure. Usually if the human female is romanceable, so is the male. From the gameplay trailer, some people were thinking there's a bit something something between Liam and Sis Ryder here. I think that Liam was just giving her hand up after they fell to this planet, but I won't rule anything out. We also got this tweet saying that Angarans are kissable, which may make Jal a romance option, and that might bump Kalo to number two on my to-do list. He looks like an octopus sailing kitty, okay? Tentakitty or octopussy. I wonder if he purrs. I hope he purrs. Also for your consideration, this previous tweet about monocles and sex being in the same sentence, case in point. Monocle Turians have been a favorite for the fans since Garrus, and I've been keen to romance a female Turian ever since Nyreen from the Omega DLC. That makes Vetra a top contender for what I like to bang. No suggestion on where she places on the can I though. Another interesting, if not entirely unexpected, choice is Drac. Ride the quad. I probably won't, but I'm into amphibian people, so totally not judging, guys. PB is an Asari. That doesn't mean, yes, she'll be romanceable. Seems likely, but who knows, really. Will I? Eh, I have a long list before I'll get to PB, unless she really blows my sucks off. Guess I really ought to get to know these people first before I make a whole to-do list. Mm. Anyway, who else? <gasps> By the goddess, I hope not. Um, um, random human? Yeah, we patch him. Gonna say chances are slim. Oh, Reese from the gameplay trailer. No face for this guy yet, but whatever. It's a nice voice, and I like nice voices. Phew, we're going to be busy on the Tempest. Is there gonna be time for anything else? I don't know, why are you asking me? Actually, wait, I'm asking me. Well, this is awkward. There is a lot happening in this trailer that I don't know if I have the capability to come through every single shot like some YouTubers do. One thing to keep in mind while watching this is that trailer magic can make it where things being said have nothing to do with the clip playing, and some scenes may play out at different angles or not at all, depending on your actions. There is a lot of Alec Papa writer voice over in the first part of the trailer, but we still don't see him in action. A voice asks if this is our golden 
world, which are worlds that might be habitable. They're the reason we're making this crazy trip. Alec confirms it's Habitat 7, New Earth, if we're lucky. The bridge Bro Rider is walking onto doesn't appear to be the same as the bridge on the Tempest. I'm guessing this is Arc Hyperion and might be our opening of the game. The Game Informer magazine article said that when we arrive at Habitat 7, there is something wrong, some weird electrical storm. Could this weird shadowy thing be the thing, or does this shot show a different planet? As said in the Andromeda Initiative briefing video, the Nexus will be finished built in Andromeda, and we get some views of this happening in Engine. Some alien ships get revealed in this footage. They are likely the cat as they don't seem particularly friendly. Hallow says something about having us pinned against the scourge. It's hard for me to make out the word, but I'm thinking it's connected to this weird stuff that was shown around the planet, which also makes an appearance at the end of the trailer with the Tempest escaping it. The Archon introduces himself Star Trek style, and Bro Rider says later, that the Archon is a master of this game. What game that is might have something to do with the vaults. It's hard to know at this point. We see the Archon hooked up to something like he's powering up. I'm not sure if the explosion afterwards is related. If you freeze frame, it looks a bit like the inside of a vault. We see Bro Rider surrendering himself to the Angara, while a female voice says he's human from another galaxy. This might be an Angaran, perhaps this lady standing here, or the one behind Jal's tentacle head. The trailer finishes off with some high energy shots, action oriented and action oriented. And that's kind of it. It's a nice way to introduce us to characters without spelling it out to us who these people are. If I didn't get any more information until March 21st, I'd be kind of happy. We're bound to get some more, but I don't need it. What about you? Do you want more information? Who do you want to bang? Comment down below, and while you're there, maybe click subscribe. You can also head over to Twitter to follow me, at SisonaCR, and see me retweet a lot of the stuff the game developers are saying. It's fun! In the meantime, Sisona signing out.